Um, for those of you all who don't know me, my name is Sharif Shabazz. I am the program manager, um, and I own a few features in AX. I work on the client side of the platform team, Task Recorder, the AX Help system being one of them, um, as well as the extensible control platform we have in AX. Uh, and with me, I have Russell Goble. I don't think your mic's off right now. Um, or you, you don't, I guess you don't have to cut it off. I'll introduce him. Uh, he's the director of industry solutions for IBIS. We've been working with, I think I've, I've known him for about a year now. I think we've been working together, maybe a little more. And um, he's just one of, uh, one of the many consumers of uh, Task Recorder. And after I give a presentation and a few demos, he's going to share some of his experience. And then uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, we really, uh, we have the ability to be intimate and candid. Uh, we'll share our experiences, our plans, and uh, everything else. So thanks for joining us, Russell. So I'll go ahead and get started. I don't want to take up too much, uh, too much of anyone's time. Is this timer going to? Is this timer? How do I start? All right, I'll just leave it alone. Let me go ahead and start off. Um, so this is how we're going to go through the uh, session. I'm going to touch on these four topics. Basic usage of Task Recorder, advanced usage. I'll touch on, I'll show you a demo of how task guides work. And I'll uh, talk about the AX help system. So for each of these, I'm going to give you a high-level overview. I'll do a live demo. I'll talk about how it works underneath. Um, I happen to be a very technical program manager, and these are very technical tools in general. And I believe I'm communicating with uh, what is generally a technical audience. So I want to explain how these systems work so that um, you, know, you, you have a better understanding of how to use them. And of course, the FAQ session uh, further on down there. So um, Task Recorder. Can I get a show of hands? There's only three folks in the room. But how many of you all are familiar with Task Recorder? One, two, three, excellent. How many are familiar with it in AX2012? Everyone, and AX7? Great, all right, so um, in AX2012, we'll start with some background. Task Recorder was uh, a tool that was essentially built to help document business processes in AX. That was the, the primary function. Um, and it did that, it was built with some sort of hooks into the AX kernel, which pretty much fired events whenever you interacted with AX. Um, the same thing carries forward into AX7, but we built it from the ground up. We've um, like the old code is essentially uh, is still, I think it's still in the AOT, but uh, the old code has been replaced. We have an entirely new implementation that uh, works better with the web and works better for a lot of the purposes um, we had it doing before. So it still captures data, still captures metadata, and you can still save your recordings to uh, lifecycle services to document your business processes and the uh, business process modeler. Um, but we've uh, added a few new feet. A a couple of new features. Of course, there's generating the X++ code. Um, since, of course, we know the business process and documenting the business process is one half, you also need to, in addition to building and implementing those processes, test them. Task Recorder enables you to generate test code that covers the same process as you document. Um, we have the task guides and AX help system. Um, the AX help system uses a task guide, the task guide being an immersive guided step-by-step uh, -step help uh, article. You can sort of think of it that way. I'll show you a demo of what that is. And um, internally, and uh, we don't really have, I think, a product scenario for this, but task recordings happen to be very useful for, uh, for support. You know, when they need to provide repro steps, you run into an issue, exactly what were you doing? Um, task guides to show you step by step how that, uh, how that issue occurred. So now let me go ahead and switch screens here and just give you a basic uh, demo of task recorder. I know that everyone's seen this before, but did you say five and six? Excellent. Um, so right now I'm running from uh, one of my um, demo machines. I think I'm working with an RTW build here. And I want to show you what it looks like in RTW, and I'll show you some features we've added in Update 2 um, as well. So let me go ahead and start off. Uh, Task Recorder is open currently in this pane you see on the right-hand side of the window. And the existing web browser client uh, still open on the left-hand side. And there's a reason we dock Task Recorder on the right. It's to allow you to interact with the usual forms and the business processes while you document them. This is something we didn't have in AX2012. So for my demo scenarios, I usually go with um, create a new product um, as my demo scenario. And I'll touch on a few of the other options you see down here because it's a small audience and I always get these questions. Um, what do those three options mean, those check boxes? Well, the last check box is a check box you'll never see on your build. It's an internal build only. We use uh, Task Recorder to do some fuzz testing of the controls that we ship in the web client. So that's what that's there for. Um, the rollback changes to business data. Um, this is an option that was essentially there early on when Task Recorder was first built in AX7. It was built as a testing tool. And then when we, when we write our X++ test, um, essentially, after every test is run, we essentially have a rollback process where we clean up the tables, clean up the data, so that we have a clean state of the system for the next test. We tried to implement something like that for Task Recorder in the web browser so that you could um, play back a recording, and when you were done, uh, play it back again. Um, the feature works as intended, but there are some caveats there that were known internally through a lot of tribal knowledge and weren't so 
uh, clear to our customers, which were we only roll back create operations. We don't roll back update or delete operations. So it's not a flat out rollback, it's not foolproof. And then the uh, used advanced role selection is another feature that I think has actually been deprecated in, a few, in uh, recent updates. Um, it was essentially there to allow you to have a more fine-grained way of telling Task Recorder which record in a row you want to, which record in a grid you want to select. All right, enough about that. Let me go ahead and start this recording. I'll run through this really quickly. Has everyone seen one of these before? Um, so now Task Recorder is started. At the top of the screen, I see my recording toolbar. It lets me know um, I'm in recording mode, and I have the ability to stop at any point in time when I'm done uh, adding all my steps, and I can uh, essentially show and hide Task Recorder at any time in the process. I can click the uh, hide button here. If you hover over that, that says hide. It disappears, I get my full uh, screen real estate, but if I want to see what I'm recording or edit some of that information, I can always tap on uh, the task recorder button to bring it back. So let me go ahead and uh, just execute my business process here. I'm going to go into product information management, all products and product masters. So as I execute this first step, task recorder notices that I've opened a form and it noticed that I've opened a form through a menu item. And then on the far right hand side of the screen there, we see that one step has been recorded. Task recorder is also very intelligent in the ability to sort of describe what that step means. And in this case, it's uh, telling the, it's saying that I navigated to you know, some form inside of one of our menus. Um, these labels come from within the AX system. They're coming from the existing AX uh, label system. And each particular action you can take with AX Web Client has a corresponding label that helps describe that action and they're parameterized. So they can insert things like the control name that you, or the control label you interacted with as well as data that you entered into that control. So as we go through the rest of the demo, we're gonna see that continue to happen. When I click on the new button, you see uh, the click new appears over there because it understands the name of the control. So let me move forward with this. I usually use a Surface Pro as my fictional product. So let me go ahead and enter that product number and press tab. That step was recorded. And we see on the right hand side, uh, it says that in the product number field type of value, it's recognized that I've typed a value. And now I'm gonna show you what it's like to edit one of these steps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna complete the business process, but I wanna show you what this edit icon does beside each one of these steps. It allows you to change some of the data that's being recorded for the step. So what we see at the very top is the ability to hide this step. Uh, what, this option, what this option does is if you're creating a task recording for the sake of a help topic or a task guide, um, sometimes there are steps in there that a user doesn't really need to follow. You follow it simply as a part of uh, doing the business process in your particular scenario with your particular data. Uh, maybe some trivial steps in there, maybe some steps in general you just don't want the uh, users to have, to have to see. So you can always hide that step from the task guide. Uh, the step instruction comes in uh, three flavors. The first one is where it would indicate to the reader, who, who's ever consuming the task recording, whether it's a task guide, a help topic, or I think um, even in BPM now, um, it'll say, you know, type this value. This is the exact value I entered when I created this task recording. By default, we set it to an, what we call an example value, which is essentially an arbitrary value, because as you're going through most help topics, a user is um, using their own data. They have their own uh, sales, or they have, they have their own product that they're creating. And the very last one allows you to type in whatever you want. Uh, for a part of the sentence. And this varies depending on the action that you completed. For an action where you enter a data into a field, um, you'll get the prefix in the field name and then you enter what you want. For something else like selecting a row in the grid, you can replace the entire sentence with what you want. And in addition, the last two boxes, the title and the notes box, these allow you to enter additional content that's shown when a user is viewing this as a help topic or as a, as a task guide. I'll go ahead and enter some text in there now to show you where that text will appear. And we'll see where this appears when I play this back uh, in the help system. There we go. So I'm gonna enter that. So I've uh, made some changes here. I've only added the title and the, uh, the notes. I'm gonna leave this example value here and click OK. Uh, so those changes I've been made in this icon update to let me know that I've made changes to uh, what was auto-generated by Task Recorder. I'm going to complete the rest of the process now just by entering my values as appropriate. Let me go ahead and uh, set a retail cat. I usually don't do this in this part of the demo, but I'll do it anyway. I'll set the retail category. I'll click OK. So I've completed uh, a very simple process in this case. I'm just, I just created a product, I haven't released it, I haven't updated any details, I just gave it a name, number, and uh, retail category. So at this point, I can consider myself done with my very simple business process. Um, I can review the steps here to see if there's anything that I wanted to change or update. Um, but I'm gonna come back to this recording and enhance it a bit later on. So for right now, I'm just gonna click stop and save it. So I'm gonna save it to my PC. And um, I, I thought I'd turn that off. 
a pop-up block and it always catches me. So let's try that one more time. All right, so now I saved to my downloads folder and I'm gonna come back to that uh, in a little while. All right, so uh, back to the presentation. Let me explain or provide some details on what's going on under the hood throughout this process, this task reporting process. That was very smooth, nice. Um, so this is a very basic high-level diagram of exactly what's going on. Um, so as the user interacts with the AX web browser, the AX web browser is communicating each of those actions back to the forms that sit on the AOS. Um, so nothing related to Task Recorder is happening in the context of the web browser. Task Recorder is a server-side um, server tool. So as a user clicks on a button, opens a form, taps data into a field, these events are communicated from the browser to the forms on the AOS through an endpoint that the forms expose to the web. Um, the forms expose an endpoint for essentially all of the controls. Each control in the form has, uh, has an endpoint and parameters you can pass to it. Now, as that data is received by that endpoint on the form, each of those controls and the forms, they have instrumentation in themselves. That instrumentation is what allows them to speak to Task Recorder and tell Task Recorder uh, what's going on. This is opposed to what may be a common understanding of how Task Recorder works, where Task Recorder is sort of um, has an inherent knowledge of the system, is spying on the system, is automatically recording the system. In fact, it's the system that is logging events to Task Recorder, so it's quite the reverse. Even when Task Recorder is not running, the system is logging these events. It's just that Task Recorder isn't storing them in memory. They're essentially uh, going into uh, nowhere. So you, task, you turn Task Recorder on, you're not seeing any performance impact or any performance hits like you might have seen in AX2012. And it's because, as I mentioned, these events are always being fired. It's just Task Recorder isn't listening to them. All right, so when those events get into the Task Recording system, Task Recorder has a very intelligent way of storing these events and sort of uh, organizing them and understanding them. It knows that certain controls belong to certain forms, so we essentially have a tree structure um, in memory that Task Recorder is holding these forms and these controls in a nested tree structure. So in addition to the form names, these are the AOT names, the control names, we also know about the control properties that are being edited. You know, for something like an input field, we're editing the property value. We know about the menu item names, and we also know about the uh, buttons and other things that are being clicked on. When you click on a button, it has a click command or a click, um, yeah, a click override, as you can see in X++, expanding, opening tab pages, uh, things of that nature. Um, and when that's all said and done, when you stop, we essentially serialize that recording file into something that cannot be shared. You can store it locally. You can upload it to LCS as part of your help system. We'll see later on. And you can also use it to generate your test code. And in this case, I'm going to use it to make further edits to the task recording. So before I do that, let me touch on a few questions we frequently get. Will task recorder work with my customized solution? Uh, yes. If your customized solution uses you know, out-of-box controls, out-of-box forms, or if you build your own forms or customize our existing forms and you use our existing controls, then yes. Task Recorder works, as I mentioned before, based off the instrumentation from the forms and the controls. If you add a new control, you'll have to add instrumentation to that control. And there's, only, there's two very simple APIs to do this. We have those documented on our AX Help Wiki for our dev developer documentation. Uh, the second question we normally get is, are recordings upgradable? What is my maintenance story for these recordings? Well, um, now you have an understanding of how Task Recorder works. Uh, all that really needs to, all Task Recorder is logging is the metadata related to your forms and your controls. So if the metadata doesn't change through upgrades, if your form names remain the same, your control names remain the same, um, Task Recorder, uh, it really doesn't care. In fact, you can move the controls around on your form. As long as they're still in the form, and as long as the, the AOT names haven't changed, the Task Recordings will work uh, through all those versions. So. Task recordings are four compatible as long as your metadata doesn't change. What else do I have? Do I have to be an admin to use Task Recorder? In AX2012, uh, you did because of the way Task Recorder was implemented. It had some uh, pretty low level hooks. Uh, today, you do not. Uh, but of course, using the menu item security, you can limit this if you want in your solution. Does Task Recorder allow someone to bypass security? Uh, absolutely not. And that question really arises from what I'm going to show in the next demo, which is this, um, this mode where Task Recorder can essentially execute itself, or it can, these steps can be taken automatically. Even when those steps are taken automatically, those events are still being replayed in the context of the user and the context of their, uh, of their security. Is there a performance overhead? No, I've mentioned that before. Does the data I enter into the data remain after I'm done? Yes, Task Recorder is doing the same thing you could do manually. It isn't uh, injecting directly, anything indirectly into the database. As I mentioned before, it doesn't uh, wipe that data away. It doesn't roll back that data, as you may think. And does a recording contain sensitive information? This is very, very important to note. It can. We usually suggest creating these recordings on a 
test uh, or demo, uh, excuse me, test or development environment with your demo data and only entering demo data. We don't suggest turning this on in a production environment, entering credit card numbers, social security numbers, and then making these your public help topics. Uh, not, um, so it depends on what data you enter into the system while task recorder is recording. Um, it seems very straightforward, but it's always something to be aware of. And this is also important where you're sharing these task recordings with uh, with Microsoft sometimes as a part of you know, logging a bug for a help case. We usually ask, and in fact, I think on the uh, feedback pane, we do have this, uh, make sure your recordings do not contain sensitive information. All right, so let's move into the advanced usage scenario. Um, and why do we call it the advanced usage scenario? It's because it can be kind of complex to understand how to use these tools. Task Recorder is doing something very special in here. It's playing back the actions automatically on the AX system. And it's going through those endpoints I mentioned before for the controls and for the forms. The second thing it's doing is, as it's automatically executing these actions, Task Recorder is also recording these actions again. So it's sort of like Task Recorder is using itself to create a new recording. That's essentially what's going on here. Um, and while it's playing back, you have uh, fine-grained control. You can have it play back you know, steps one through three of 10, and then you can um, record some more steps here, a new four, five, and six, and then play back the rest to get a larger recording. Um, this is our initial editing scenario for our RTW build. You essentially uh, play back part of the task recording, you add the steps you want, you play back the rest. At the end, you get a new, larger, or modified edited recording. And you can also skip some of these steps, you can delete some of these steps, and as I mentioned, when you're done, you have a recording that has the old steps that you played back, as well as uh, new steps. So now let me hop into a quick demo of how this uh, can be done. So this is uh, usually pretty fun to do because it looks really cool as it's happening. So let me go ahead and um, get back to my dashboard. And now I have Task Recorder open. Instead of creating a new recording, I'm going to use this mode that says Update Recording Steps. And as you can see from the subtext, it says Updating Steps in a Recording allows you to modify the sequence, uh, the sequence of steps. So let me go ahead and open up the recording I saved before from my PC. There we go. Let me click Start. And now uh, Task Recorder started again. Notice that, but things look a lot different here. You have uh, far more uh, controls on the screen. The very top right, let's start off with the playback controls. You have three options here. You can play the next step. We sort of have the arrow pointing to this guy to correlate the fact that um, this guy is the next step. Step number one is the next step. Uh, the second option is to play to a selected step. What that really means is you can select a step further down in the process, say step number four, and say play steps one through four and then stop because I want to do something, I want to modify something, I want to add more steps, or maybe those are the only steps I want to keep. And the last one just says play all the steps um, keep going until you, uh, until you uh, finish with executing all of the steps. And then further below there, we have some, uh, more, uh, some more options. Of course, there's the simple one, which is delete step. This simply removes the step from the uh, recording, depending on when you delete it. If it's something you've already recorded and now you want to delete it, Task Recorder will mark it for deletion. And when you click stop, it'll essentially pull that step out of the serialized version. If you delete it before you execute it, before you play it back, then it'll just skip over that step in the playback process. Um, starting this concept of subtask, uh, in task, this is a way of essentially category, categorizing your steps into, um, into groups. It doesn't really affect the, the playback system or the task recorder's uh, structure at all. It's really used for those help systems when you have really long business processes and you want to break it down into a sequence that's easier for the user to understand as they move through those uh, larger processes. And add developer placeholder is something that's used for our X++ testing scenario, which I won't be touching on in this demo. Um, but essentially it allows you to insert uh, a placeholder where when you generate the test, you can now write custom code at that step. So if I were to insert a placeholder at let's say step four, I could write custom code that would be executed at step four when the test is being uh, run. So let's go ahead and do this uh, really cool thing now. I'm just gonna say playback all steps and we're gonna see Task Recorder is going to uh, go ahead and try to create this product um, automatically by executing these steps automatically. And uh, ahead of time, I can go ahead and tell you that it's gonna run into an issue here. Bam, there we go. So that's our issue. And this is actually, believe it or not, a part of the demo now. It didn't used to be a part of the demo. Um, so we have a red X now on the very last step. Steps one through you know, five and that, that lookup steps, those executed perfectly fine automatically. Um, but why did Task Recorder, why was I unable to click the OK button? Clearly the OK button is disabled. And if you understand this part of the product, you understand that um, the message is saying the product number that Task Recorder tried to enter it's already been created in the system. I just created it a few seconds ago in the uh, original recording, and I haven't deleted it from the system. I didn't clean up my data. This is a very, very important scenario to understand because this happens 
all of the time when you're playing back these recordings automatically, when you have these uh, data duplication uh, validation requirements inside of AX. And you, you want to know about these up front so that you don't run into this issue when you're playing back the recording. But if you do run into the issue, it's very, very simple to work around using the RTW version of Task Recorder, and it's even easier uh, in the Update 2 version of the Task Recorder. So let me show you how you would do this in the RTW build. So Task Recorder wasn't able to record the step of clicking OK. All your, your goal right now is just to get that click OK into the recording and then save the recording. So to do that, you would just need to click OK, but you know the form isn't letting you uh, click OK until you enter a unique product number. So I would enter a unique product number. The OK button is enabled. I can click OK. So now my recording more or less looks the way I want, except for the fact that I have this, um, this extra step in here where I've entered the product number again when it, it already pre-existed. But that's why we have this uh, editing tool that allows you to delete that step. Very simple, uh, very easy. So now Task Recorder essentially lets you know through the various UI and icons that these two steps, click OK and uh, enter the product number again, will not be included in the recording when you click stop and download it. So the recording looks the way you expect. It has all of our original steps here. You can click, simply click stop, save that to the PC, and uh, you know, keep moving on, edit it again, upload it to LCS, uh, whatever you have there. So let me go ahead and see if I can uh, move through this a bit quicker. Oops, don't want to move there yet. I have to uh, hop back over to my slides and we'll talk a bit about what's going on under the hood when you're using this playback mode. I did explain it at a high level, and here's another diagram that essentially shows you what's going on. You have the old, oops, you have the old recording. This is the recording that I had on my system, my downloads photo that I uploaded uh, to the playback system. And now the playback system is sort of acting the way I did when I first created the recording. The playback system is executing these steps automatically through the, AO, through the AOS. And at any point in time, I can pause that playback system and I can manually execute some steps through the browser, which eventually goes to the AOS. And once it hits Task Recorder's recording system, everything else is the same. There's really no difference between you doing a step and it automatically playing back a step. They go through the same uh, security mechanism, same form logic, as I mentioned before. Uh, you get a new recording when you're done, and you can go through the process as many times as you want. All right, so now uh, before I hop over to my, uh, my next slide, let me hop back into this demo and inject the uh, enhancements we've made in Update 2 to show you how that playback system, uh, you may not need to use it. We have a new tool that makes it much easier to edit your recordings. So I'm going to hop into uh, this tab here, and something's a bit different about the task recorder menu. The third step now says edit recording, and the last one says playback recording. So um, the last one used to say update recording steps. It used to be the way you would edit a recording. Now we're saying we have a more lightweight editing mode that doesn't require you to play back those, re those recording steps. I can simply click uh, edit recording here. I can open the recording from my PC. This is the one I created, uh, the very first one I created. I don't believe that I downloaded the new one, so I didn't overwrite anything. There we go. So now we see we have a few editing options here. I think the size of my browser is uh, throwing up the score bar, but I can change the recording name and description if I wanted. Um, and I can also, uh, essentially in this mode, what we're allowing you to do is rather than play back parts of the recording and then have to insert steps and play back the rest of the recording, we allow you to just insert the steps you want exactly where you want. So we essentially open up a small task recording session in the middle of uh, the steps you already have here. And I'll show you exactly how that works. So let's say that inside of my scenario, uh, I have entering the product number, I have entering the product name, I don't have entering the search name, but I want to um, add a step that informs the user they can enter a, enter a search name. So the way I would do that is first select the step above where I want to insert. I essentially want to insert steps after the step that's selected. So I select the product name field. The next thing I would do is I click the insert step button but this button will not enable for me until I'm in the right place in the AX product. Um, we understand the form that these steps took place on, so we try to prevent you from essentially creating a broken recording in this case. So we say when you, get, when you get back to that form, we recognize that your form context will let you add steps there. So in this case, I just want to go to our product information management, uh, get to my new, uh, my new product form. And once I'm there, insert step is enabled. And in this case, I don't have to enter data into any of these fields. It doesn't matter that the product number is required. I don't have to click OK. I can simply click on Insert Step. Task recording starts. I enter the uh, search name. That step appears. I click Stop on Task Recorder. 
I've edited my task recording, um, just as simple as that. No data duplication issues, no playback issues. I did the minimal amount of work required to get that new step into my task recording. I can now click uh, Done on it, and I can use it for any of the other downstream processes, my test code, my help topics, my BPM, um, et cetera. So very simple, very cool feature we've added. This has uh, tremendously helped our, our content publishing team. They have over 600 task guides they had ready at RTW. And you know, of course, trying to edit those can be very, very painful if you have to play them back all the time. You have to worry about your environments, your data, multiple people doing these things. So this really helped those guys out. Let me hop back into the presentation now and keep things moving. Um, I answered this question, why did my recording stop? Uh, the playback system for task recorders, sometimes it'll pause automatically. And we saw that happen when I clicked the OK button. It knows when it tried to execute a step, or for example, it tried to open a form or click a button, and that event didn't make it back to the recording system. Essentially what happened is the playback system said execute command, and the recording system didn't see the output of that command get logged again. So this means something's going on. We tried to do something, it wasn't recorded, task recorder pauses automatically when this happens. It can happen for any number of reasons. It can happen because um, the user who's playing back the recording doesn't have access to that menu item. Task recorder can't override that. They don't have access to that, uh, that button. These things are limited by security. Or maybe the button was disabled, data duplication. Any of these issues could be a reason why the uh, task recording system would pause automatically. That doesn't mean anything's broken. It just means you need to adjust the issue in the system, get the form into the correct state, or uh, log in with the right user and uh, continue with the uh, process. And I, I blew through these already. Um, actually, I haven't touched on this one. Um, if your metadata does change, um, if you get a new AX update and for some reason we've changed our form names, which is something we do very, very rarely, um, or if your control names have changed, um, then task recording will fail to find that form or fail to find the control because it's still looking for the old name. Um, so these are some things to keep in mind. And like I said, you have a new editing system that makes it very easy to fix these things when they do crop up. So let's hop into the next part. What are these task guides? They are a guided training experience and they are powered by the task recordings for your business processes. Uh, they're very cool um, in that they're not simply you know, a Word document or a static screen that a user reads and uh, references back and forth as they execute the process in AX, um, reading the, or the document they have to figure out what the next step is. So an immersive experience is powered by Task Recorder. Um, task Recorder essentially is able to detect when you execute an action, so we do the same thing for the task guide. We tell the user, or we, as a part of training, we inform the user this is how you start the process. And throughout that process, as the user executes the step, we recognize they've executed the step, and we automatically proceed them to the next step in the process. Very easy to do, very easy to follow along. Let's go ahead and run through a demo of one of those. Oops, it was uh, six. All right, so uh, let me go back to my, uh, my demo machine here. I'll return to the main menu uh, for Task Recorder. And in this case, I'm going to choose a second option, Play Recording as Guide. This allows me to take a task recording that I've created myself and see what that help experience is gonna be like before I actually publish it to my help library. So in this case, I'm gonna play the recording that we previously, uh, the same one we've been using the entire time, create a new product. I'm gonna open that up. Say open it as a task guide. And this is the, essentially the first part of the help experience the user would see. They would see the name of the uh, task guide, the name of the recording at the very top. If I had entered a description, that would appear under the section for description. And they see the list of steps that were recorded as a part of this process. So very, very easy to create this documentation. You see, I didn't have to type in uh, any of the text that's here. Optionally, I did add some text for step number three. Uh, if you can read that from back there, where I mentioned the product number must be unique. You can use the Surface Pro 4 as a product number if you want. So you have the ability to add additional help context when you want for the user, but a lot of this text can be generated automatically by the task recording system very intelligently. And now when a user says, this looks like the, uh, this looks like the topic that's gonna help me get my business process done, they can go ahead and start the task guide. And now we move into the task guide playback mode. So this isn't an automatic playback mode like you have for task recorder where it's executing the steps for you automatically. This is an interactive um, prompting sort of experience where we tell the user what to do, wait till they've done the correct step, and we tell them what the next step is. In this case, the first step is telling me to navigate to the all products and product masters form. So as I execute that step, the AOS, the task recorder running on the server recognizes that step is executed. It says, okay, now prompt the user to move to the next step. And we have this very immersive UI. You see this, uh, we don't really have a good name for it, but it's more like a flying black box. It moves around the UI, pointing at the UI elements the user should interact with as they complete the business process. So in this case, I just click on new, 
and I obey the instructions uh, going forward, we can see here's where some of that custom text I entered is appearing, um, telling me about the unique name of the product. And if I click show more, I'll see the note I entered as well, which is informing me about a product number I can use. Let me go ahead and I'll complete that step. And when I complete the step, Task Recorder recognizes that, takes me through the process, as I mentioned before, uh, step by step. Very immersive, very, very useful um, for your, your help experiences. And I can go ahead and uh, select a category here, click OK. And uh, I finished my task guide. I've created my product in the AX system. Um, if I want, I can go, uh, now I can, like I said, I can publish this task guide to my help system. So this is a part of my task guide creation and testing process. I manually uploaded this task recording to see what the task guide experience would be like. Now we can move on to the AX help system. Let me uh, step out of my demo environment and touch on the last few bits about the task guides. Okay, what's going on in the task guide system? I've explained this in words already, but we're sort of moving through this flow where we start at the top left. Um, or rather at the top in the middle. The task guide is uh, loaded and it tells the user to take an action. If the user takes the action, the action goes back to the form on the AOS. The form and the controls on the AOS tell Task Recorder the action was taken through the instrumentation. Task Recorder says, was this the, the correct action? Right? If they didn't open the right form, then we have some pretty cool UI in the client that say, yeah, this wasn't the right form, we're gonna wait for you to get to the right place. Or if they enter data into the, uh, a control that wasn't being prompted, it's not an error. Task Recorder won't say, hey, that was wrong. Sometimes the user needs to vary a bit from the help topic as a part of their individual business processes. We'll simply wait till they take the correct action and then move them on to the, uh, the next step in the process. So it's very intelligent in that way. Um, and here's another thing you might run into. Sometimes the task guide can encounter an error. And I think it, it even says, it says something like, oops, you're on the wrong form, or oops, um, you need to close this form and move somewhere else. It's, this, this is because Task Recorder and the task guide is very intelligent. We understand the state of the AX system. We know when the user's opened the right form, we know when they've opened the wrong form. Uh, sometimes the user accidentally clicks the new button and opens a dialogue on top of the form they should be on. The very instant they do that, the task guide will change its text, it'll change its presentation, and it'll say, looks like you're in the wrong place, go ahead and close this dialogue, we'll get you back on track. Um, but it's also important to note that AX is a very complex uh, product, lots of branching scenarios, so sometimes you wanna build that thought into your task guides. Um, you need to make sure when you're testing your task guide and playing it back, you're sort of going through it the same way a uh, user your training might, or um, a, a novel, a novice user with AX might. Uh, sometimes they get off track and you wanna have your task guide prepared to work for those scenarios. So using all the tools we have in the task guides, you can do that by changing the text, um, adding these custom steps, uh, things of that nature. All right, uh, let's move on to the AX help system. I think I'm still doing pretty okay on time. Um, what is the AX help system? Uh, I'll go ahead and show you the demo in a few seconds. You open AX help by clicking the question mark. It's always available. And what we show are the task guides that are useful to the current page. And of course, because we have all this metadata in the task recordings and the task guides, we know exactly which forms they are useful for. So we're leveraging all of that intelligence right there. Users can search for other task guides if they want. Um, sometimes a task guide may not necessarily be relevant to the page they're on, but they want to get to that page and they're not sure how to get there. They can search for that task guide and it'll tell them how to get to that form. The AX help system, this is important to note, it uses LCS as the storage and indexing mechanism for all of the help topics. Your task guides are not stored in AX, they're stored in LCS so that you don't have this duplicate place where you have to put one for your business processes and another place for your help topics. We get some cool stuff from LCS, such as the ability to um, publish our help topics really easily to you, um, our, our consumers, as well as the ability to uh, like I said, leverage your existing business processes documentation automatically if you want, uh, but it's entirely configurable. LCS also gives us a searching experience, and I'll show you how that works in this demo. Before I hop into the demo, this is a question that may not be um, so important nowadays now that we have the AX Help Wiki that explains all this, um, but there are some prerequisites to configuring the AX Help system. When you configure the AX Help system, you wanna make sure that the machine is provisioned by LCS um, otherwise, the AX instance won't be able to authenticate with LCS to get access to that library. Another thing is, is that the logged in user must be in the organization that is associated with the AX product, uh, AX, the LCS project, excuse me. This requirement has actually changed recently in our update uh, to build. Uh, instead of doing user-based authentication, which means that uh, a user who can open the BPM library has to configure AX help. We moved to a tenant-based authentication. Now, uh, essentially any user who's in that tenant logged into AX instance can use that tenant authentication mechanism to get access to the corporate and global libraries the tenant has access to. 
Um, so what are those steps? Let me go ahead and show you what those steps are. Very simple three-step process. Assuming you've already uh, built up your, uh, you have your LCS library and you've created a few of these task recordings and you've saved them to that library. What does it look like to get that guy set up? Well, you want to move to the system parameters form that's sitting in your menu under uh, system administration, system parameters. We haven't moved that location. And when you're on that form, you go ahead and click on the help tab. And the very first thing you want to do, if this isn't pre-populated for you, is select the LCS, let me get this right, I think it's called a project, an LCS project that contains your library. And once you've selected that project, you then go ahead and check off on the libraries you want to include. And you see here we have a lot of the Microsoft published libraries checked off. So if you're having trouble finding uh, this information, you can uh, use this very simple correlation method. You can look at the ID for your project and the ID for your library. And if you're in the right place in LCS, you'll see the ID for your project in the URL as well as the ID for your library in the URL. So we can see this is our library and it has over 3,000 business processes and of those 3,000, uh, if we count these number, uh, this number is over here, these numbers mean that this uh, business process has a BPM diagram attached to it, and which our case, because all of our BPM diagrams are powered by task recordings, means that we have over two, 300, maybe a few more task guides in this particular library. Um, so that's uh, what it's like to set up the AX help system. How does the AX, AX help system look to a user when they consume it? Uh, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, if you click on the question mark button, the help system appears on the right-hand side, and the moment it first appears, it does that search to LCS. It sees if there are any help topics for the form you're on. Ironically, we don't have any help for how to set up our help system in AX, and that's kind of ironic because how would you get that help if you hadn't set it up? Uh, let's go ahead and move back to the dashboard, though. And as I do that, we'll see dynamically the help system issues another query to uh, LCS. As a user moves through the AX product, they can leave the help form open, and it'll dynamically pull up help topics that are related to that page. In this case, it seems we have a whole lot of help topics that touch on the dashboard, and that's because it's the main entry point for the, uh, for the product. But let's hop into a page I was using previously, like uh, product information management, uh, all products and product masters. It's issuing another query here to LCS, and now I'll get task recordings that are far more, um, what's that word, uh, relevant to the scenario I may be working on. And it seems in our particular help system, we don't have any for this page, which is Pretty ironic, uh, I thought we did. Let me go hop into all sales orders there. Maybe the library's changed since the last try at this. Um, so yeah, we're issuing a help, uh, essentially a search query to LCS based on the form name. And I can go ahead and show you what that looks like manually by going to form information. We see the form name here is sales table list page and a few of the task recordings we find are related to uh, sales order invoices. So if I hop into uh, LCS, I could type in that exact same thing in here. If we read this subtext, it says, um, enter a keyword or AOT object name, you know, dollar, then the name of the form. And I think uh, sales table list page is what I wanted to enter here. And we can see this is the same search system. So this is essentially what the AX Health System is doing automatically, it's, except it's doing it, of course, through an endpoint, through a web endpoint. It's um, connecting to LCS, authenticating on behalf of the tenant, finding that project, that library, and then it's entering this search query. Um, so you see it takes a few seconds here. I think this is... This is running in prod, but we have a fairly large library here. This one's been already indexed, so we should see a list of results show up that match the list of results we see in AX. So the first one we found is uh, create a event Kanban rule. And I did, some, uh, I did some operations research in college. I know what a Kanban process is. And it's gonna be fairly far down on this list, um, but we would find that guy in there. Usually I expect one of the sales order ones to uh, here first, uh, but there we go. We got our create sales orders, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, all down the list. So um, I'm showing you this experience because this is one of the ways as you're setting up your help system, you can sort of make sure things are working the way you expect. If you, um, if you feel like a help topic should be appearing on this page, but it's not appearing when you open up help, um, you can always log into LCS enter that search query, enter that form name, and see does the help topic show up there. If it doesn't, uh, then one of two things could be the issue. Um, one is that the task recording actually didn't touch that form. It didn't go through that form, um, as you may have expected. And what I mean by go through that form is you have to commit an action on that form. Opening the form and looking at it alone may not be enough. 
And the second thing that could happen is you've recently saved this task recording to LCS. If it's recently been saved, then the LCS system may not have had time to index the task recording, especially if it's a new library. Um, it may, they may not have time to index it into their search system. Uh, those things, the, the time it takes to do that could vary from a few minutes to a few hours, depending on the load on the LCS system, as we've seen historically. Um, but very useful information to have uh, nonetheless. So from any of these uh, task recordings that's in the help system, the end user experience would be to find the one that seems to be relevant to what they want based on the title. Go ahead and click it to open it up. There we go. As we're loading that task guide, we're reaching out to LCS with that task guide ID, and we're essentially downloading that same task recording file. Now we're displaying it to the user, and as you can see, there's far, far more content and a real uh, task guide used for the AX help system. This one has about 39 steps, and they've all been annotated with a lot of context to make it as useful as possible. I mean, then starting this is the same as before. You click Start Task Guide from anywhere, it'll tell you where to go for the first form, and you can follow through the rest of the process. All right, so uh, heading back to the presentation, we're about to wrap up here. I'll go through a quick Q&A on setting up the AX Help. I've configured everything. My tasks aren't showing up. Just talked about that process. You can use the search bar. Uh, it may also be that your um, AX Help system is still being indexed. For more resources on Task Recorder, we have several topics on the AX Help Wiki. You can usually just uh, search for Task Recorder, Task Guide, or AX Help, and these topics and a few more will appear. We suggest looking into those if you're, um, if you're in this process of getting started with Task Recorder, Task Guides, and our AX Help system. Um, so I'll take this opportunity to uh, give the floor to uh, Russell. As I mentioned before, he is one of our uh, customers who's worked with Task Recorder. They've used it for a few interesting purposes, um, and he'll share his experiences. Yeah, thank you, Sharif. Um, so we are, uh, uh, I'm, I'm from IBIS. Uh, our ISV solution is adv uh, advanced supply chain software. It's very much focused on distribution and supply chain uh, uh, customers in the industry. Uh, what the task guide has allowed us to do as, as in both an ISV that is, you know, selling in customers and implementing, but also from a product development perspective, it's allowed us to really build out a suite of, um, of, of task guides that prove out our solution. But on top of that, when we, we build our own library, our own business process library that we tailor towards the industry that we, you know, we're going after. So it has a mixture of standard X processes as well as our enhancements to Dynamics AX and the task order just picks that right up as Sharif said. And then when we build out that library, we can prove out to our end customers, this is what we're gonna implement. This is the business process library that we think fits you as, as, a, uh, as a distributor and we know distribution and this helps us prove, us, prove it out. And then we can go in there and show them the individual functions that we've always had. The idea, of course, behind the business process library, as well as you know, how it interacts with lifecycle services, is allow us as an app source solution uh, to actually go in there and implement a templated solution to our end customers. The customers that we can say, you know, this helps us streamline and your, uh, your implementation process, and here's why. Because we already know the business processes, we got the system already pre-configured for it, and now we just need to go out and prove out these things. And if there's gaps, you use those. But those task guides really allow us to do that, and we're cons full consumers of the task guide solution. We use it to build out uh, not only our business process libraries, we use it for training materials, we use it to build out labs. Um, we've dabbled, we started to dabble a little bit in the automated testing, uh, but really we are using it for everything. And then also in our sales cycles as well, like I said, it also helps us prove out that industry expertise, but also when we show that to an IT group, or we show that to you know, the, uh, the key influencers of, of making a decision. When they see how we, can, how we can, first of all, easily train the user with that playback, and then we also say, you know what, and this is anything you do with the system will help you grow with this, and all you can do is re-record this, you can do those edit steps, as, as Shreve said, then you can actually start building on your own custom task guide library that will be fully available to the help system. It'll help you not only you know, train your new users or train users on the new system that they're adopting, but as you onboard new users you know, going forward over the life cycle of your, of your, uh, of your system, then they'll just have it go right in and it'll actually help them train and it'll actually should streamline that ramp up for any new employee. So really, the value of, ta of the task guides and the new task record order, and I've been in AX for 11 years. I actually remember when it came in in AX4 and thought it was <laughs> really cool, but I mean, what we have in AX7 is just absolutely a, 
It's a, it's a day and night um, exercise in what we used to have. And it really helps us not only just from a documentation perspective, it helps us in that full application lifecycle management uh, story that, that Microsoft and, uh, tells with li lifecycle services. It's just a tool that is fundamentally important to yourself as an ISV, to yourself as an implementer, and yourself, most importantly, as a customer. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate it, Russell. Yeah. All right, so um, that's all we have for you all today. Uh, we have some few minutes here, and I'm sure I'll be here for more than just the uh, four minutes and 15 seconds we have left. Um, we want to answer your questions, get to know you a bit, so um, please feel free to not to use the microphones. There's too few people here. Just come up to the stage, and uh, we'll answer what we can. Thank you. <laughs>